Did you know the cosmic intelligence behind ancient Indian temple architecture? That many Indian temples weren't just places of worship, but were designed to align with the movements of the sun and the stars. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Did You Know series. Today we explore something truly fascinating, the cosmic intelligence behind ancient Indian temple architecture. Did you know that many Indian temples weren't just places of worship, but were designed to align with the movements of the sun and the stars? Let's start with the great city of Vijayanagar in Karnataka, the capital of the ancient of the medieval rather Vijayanagar Empire. Researchers including Dr. John McKim Malville studied over 150 temples there. What they found was remarkable. Most of the temples faced due east, directly aligned with the rising sun. This wasn't random. It was a deliberate design to ensure that each day began with the first rays of sunlight touching the temple entry. Interestingly, some smaller shrines in the region are tilted slightly, between 70 to 80 degrees, allowing sunlight to fall on them during special solar days, like the equinox when the day and night are of equal length. Now let's move to Sringeri, where the Vidya Shankar temple stands. Built in the 14th century, this temple also functions as a kind of solar calendar. It has 12 stone pillars, each connected to a sign of the zodiac. As the months change, the morning sun shines on the pillar representing the current zodiac month. How cool is that? This shows how well our ancestors understood both time and astronomy and architecture, frankly. Going even further back in time, we find the Nilurallu stone alignment in Andhra Pradesh. These are large stones arranged in a square formation. On the days of the equinox, and solstice, sunlight moves precisely between them, indicating the change in seasons. This suggests that even thousands of years ago, Indians were tracking solar patterns using stone structures. And then there's the Mudherar Sun Temple in Gujarat. It was designed so that on the day of the equinox, the very first ray of sunlight enters the sanctum and lights up the Murti of Surya, the sun god. Imagine the precision. No modern tools, just deep knowledge of the sun's movement. But it wasn't only the sun they respected. In Vijayanagar, for example, many buildings were aligned with natural landmarks like Matanga Hill. It was considered sacred. Those who don't know, see my documentary Legends of the Ramayana on Discovery TV and you'll find out why Matanga Hill is considered sacred. Temples such as the Hazara Rama temple and the Kodanda Rama were placed carefully to create a sacred layout that connected the land with the sky. This connection between architecture and nature is part of an ancient science called Vastu Shastra, the Indian system of space design. Sadly, in today's day, Vastu Shastra is just associated with I don't know, I mean, uh, superstitions or God knows what else, but sadly, because it is not taught scientifically to our architecture students and even to our science students, Vastu Shastra has much, much deeper principles and it should be taught properly. Uh, in any case, coming back, temples were often built as mandalas or cosmic diagrams symbolizing the structure of the universe. A powerful example of this is the Brihadeshwara temple in Tanjavur. Scholars like Subhash Kak point out that its dimensions and layout reflect cosmic ratios, suggesting that the temple was built to represent the universe itself, the microcosm reflecting the macrocosm. And finally, there is a famous Konark Sun Temple in Odisha. It's not just a temple, but also 
a giant timekeeping device. The temple features 24 intricately carved stone wheels. As the sun moves, the shadows cast by these wheels mark the passage of time, like a giant stone clock. Regrettably, there are almost no standing ancient temples in North India. You would have noticed I listed almost no, actually I listed no examples from there. Why? Because there are almost no standing ancient temples in North India in the Indo-Gangetic plains from Punjab to Bengal. As V.S. Naipaul had noted, most of these temples were destroyed by the barbaric and iconoclastic Turkic rulers, who are commonly known as Delhi Sultans and Mughals. But even the ruins you find in North India give you an idea of how great those ancient temples must have been. And there is an opportunity to build new temples now, grand temples that our ancestors would be proud of, with superlative architecture, deep symbolism and most importantly, a resonant connection with the cosmos and the divine. For example, think of how the sunlight forms a Surya Tilak on the Murti of Ram Lalla at the Ram Janbhumi temple at exactly 12 noon on Ram Navmi. This is a modern marvel. So the next time you step into a temple, look around. Notice the direction, the sunlight, the placement. These structures were designed not just for prayer, but to reflect a deep understanding of the cosmos. Our ancestors lived in tune with nature, time and the divine. And they left behind temples that remind us of that harmony. Thank you for listening to Did You Know? See you next time with another story from India's timeless past. And if you did like this episode, please hit like and subscribe below so that you can get notifications when the next episode launches. Namaste. Jai Hind.